Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta and the International Gemological Institute held its first ever international edition of the IGID show in Dubai this month in an attempt to reach global audience. The show displayed more than a lakh designs from 33 jewelry makers, including those from India, Turkey and the GCC countries. All 14 of IGI's previous diamond shows were held here in India. And today's episode, we bring you the exclusives from the show with some global jewelry market bigwigs. But before that, joining us now is the mass printer. He's President and Managing Director of IGI. Mr. Printer, hi, good to have you. Let me begin by asking you on what really is the IGI's vision now for the next five years? Vision is to export India to the rest of the world. We have very high expertise in the manufacturing of diamonds, lab-grown diamonds, and jewelry. So I want I mean, I'm going to use, uh, we are going to use the IGID show as a platform to take it to the world over. You know, there are several destinations uh, ongoing from now on, and we will decide which one we will do. Mm. Mr. Printer, how was 2022 as a year for IGI, and what are you now looking forward to in 2023 in sense of growth and numbers? 2023 is a challenging year, but I always love challenges because challenges give you solutions, make you think, you know. So uh, I think it's going to be a good year. I mean, with all these innovations, especially coming out with lab growns also, where we are number one, IJ is number one in the lab growns, and we will conquer the world. So when you do look at the lab-grown uh, diamonds and the natural diamonds in India, what is the kind of adoption that you see? If you had to give a percentage of the market share as of now, how does it stand? Lab-grown is a new uh, concept, new uh, product, okay? It's a growing product. And currently, it is going through its teething hassles, you know? So like any new concept, it will take time to get it matured, but though now, maturity goes at a very rapid scale you know, with all the internet and with all the communications the world over i mean it's not in the old days where you know it took a 10 year uh, period for a product to uh, fructify into a whole uh, aspect today it takes barely a couple of years and you see the difference so i'm very s bullish about both see what happens is these the natural diamonds and the lab-grown diamonds have a parallel path to go. We are reaching out to more and more consumers tremendously, every virtually every day. And the more awareness it's creating, the more hangama in the marketplace it's con I mean conveying, just goes to, I'm telling you, it's it's complementary to each other, you know. It's not that, you know, lab-grown is going to, like, affect the natural sale and natural is going to affect the lab-grown sale. No. Both have their own individual uh, market place and both will progress evenly. Mm. So, IGI has done record lab-grown diamonds as saying. Any figures that you could share with us? like to keep that a secret I'll tell you why you know we've already done over 30 carats in lab growns hmm? in Vegas the JCK show in Vegas I will unfold the largest diamond ever grown in a laboratory but you'll have to wait for it <laughs> and wait, we will. Thank you so much, Mr. Printer, for joining us. So, uh, 30 carats already done and lab grown, and an even bigger diamond now coming in in the first week of June. That's when the JCK is happening. But back in Dubai, I caught up with Rola Laurie, who's global CEO of IGI, who told me that consumers are becoming more and more aware of the importance of buying certified jewelry. He said that IGI volumes have tripled in the last three years. The growth has been amazing. There's a very strong demand for certification. I think that in the last three years, we almost tripled volume. And this is uh, 
thanks to the demand in the market in general and also thanks to the consumers that have really a trust in IGI and I think that IGI is really bringing something to the consumers in, in a way that you know they can go they can go to a jewelry shop and they can just you know buy in confidence it means they they need to like the jewelry they need to trust the jewelry shop but at the same thing, time the certificate brings them the trust mm -hmm. and this today is very important for the consumer of course and in all of that map where do you see india standing uh, India is an amazing position because, uh, as you know, 90% of the diamonds are polished in India. And I think 80% of the jewelry is manufactured in India. Mm. So, and besides that, India has an amazing uh, uh, internal market as well. So for me, India is a very exceptional country because it's the only country in the world that has a huge internal market and a huge export market. Yeah. So it means that we could say today that one, a nine stone out of ten that you find in South America or in the US or in Australia or any place in Africa was polished in India. India correct. Would you say there's more awareness about certification now and uh, consumers are basically now asking for it too? Yes, 100 percent. I mean, uh, different factors have helped to that. I mean, probably the major factor is Internet. And Internet has made it very... I mean, before that, the jewelers were not looking so much to sell with certificates because the consumer didn't know. Mm. But the fact is that today the consumers very often are more aware of what's going on than the jewelers. Mm. So they're more demanding. And as I said, the certificate became an important part. So we are somewhere the brand that brings the confidence to the consumer. And almost no consumer today will buy without a certificate. Absolutely. And you know, there's this, uh, uh, the whole thing about natural diamonds and the lab-grown diamonds also picking quite strongly right now. Yes. And IGI does both of these. How are you looking at uh, the pickup when it comes to volume within lab-grown? Uh, of course, the pickup in lab-grown is, is uh, very impressive and very fast. But IGI has been the first one to decide to certify lab-growns uh, already 15 years ago, nobody was doing it. I mean, nobody in the industry was even really thinking seriously of lab grown. And we decided to go in it because we thought, you know, what man can manufacture in small volume, one day he will manufacture in big volume. Mm. It, it's with everything, it's like that. Mm. For me, the example was uh, flat uh, TV screens. Mm. You know, the first ones were $25,000 and you had very few. And then years later, you have millions of flat uh, TV screens and at a, very, at a reasonable price. We, so we saw this happening with Lab Grown also. But at the same time, we think that Lab Grown and Natural are very complementary. Mm. Okay? I know not, not everybody agrees to that, but slowly on, we're going to get to that. Mm. We think that the young people, a lot of them cannot afford a natural diamond. Right. So now, thanks to Lab Grown, it brings hundreds of millions of young people back to diamonds, mm. okay? Uh, India is a little bit different, but when you look at the United States or Europe, women don't wear diamonds anymore, mm. and certainly not young women. Mm. And by the way, the, the average age of buying a diamond today in the U.S. is 42 years, okay. when it used to be 30 years old 20 years ago. Mm. So diamonds slowly on were going out of fashion. On an year on year, how, what would you say? How many more and more diamonds are you grading now? And uh, uh, would you also say that with the way the market is going, uh, the ticket size, how would you differentiate that? Is it increasing, going down? How is it? No, no, no. as I said, I mean, it, it's increasing, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. And you see, we, we even have so much demand that now we're opening two new labs, one in Turkey and one in Egypt, okay. which are countries, you know, that are not the major countries, but we see all those markets are developing and demand for the right product with right explanation is, is there. I also met with Antila Anli of Turkish jewelry brand Antila Karat. He believes that the trend among Indian consumers has shifted from just buying gold to now including diamonds in their portfolio and purchases. Yeah, I like gold, like diamond. Before, I don't like diamond in the color stone, only gold. Right. But now, I like diamond also. You know how to think. Mm -hmm. Cheap, cheap, good. Okay. High, high, good. Okay. Medium, not sell. Okay. Uh, somebody he like, he keep really very expensive piece. Because expensive piece, always you make money. 
always you don't lose money. Cheap good for, for example, for uh, thinking, for enjoy. For another Turkish jewelry brand, La Joya, India is a key market as it has many suppliers. Sali Ilmaz of La Joya also tells me that the U.S. market has slowed down a bit for Turkey. Listen in. Actually, the Indian is a very, very important to us mm. because, you know, the all suppliers there. Mm. You know, uh, we are like a big family. Mm. And Turkey and the India are very close to each other. Mm. And the culture is also very, you know, similar. <clears throat> Everybody loves each other. Mm. And then we are a good relationship and more important. Working is a important for the it's a huge market mm. some seasons come you know mm. the north side east side mm. the, the weather condition you know the culture and the, yeah, but it's okay little slow now little slow and we are looking for the you know the different different market mm. if united states little bit slow down we, okay. we focus on other side well that's the global markets and of course their view on jewelry trade across the international space there but with that it's time for a short break don't go anywhere we get you more exclusive from the show when we return